When bringing a product into retail, using a distributor is the next step after bringing it to local retail stores. Once you figure out what works in stores and what gets the product to move off the shelf, hopefully you'll be able to bring it to a distributor that'll move the product down the line. Now, bringing it to the distribution level, it offers you a lot of versatility because you're taking the business to the level where you don't have to bring the product into the stores. You can have a larger footprint as far as geographically where you can service because they have multiple trucks on the road, they go to different areas and you don't have to physically be there. But it doesn't mean that your job is gonna get any less complicated because you move from sales on the front end into more manufacturing and merchandising. So when the product is with a distributor, you're one arm removed. You're not gonna be the person in the store selling the product. That can be a little tricky because the product may not be sold as well because nobody loves your baby like you do. So knowing that going in, having that tempered expectation is important, but also knowing what works as far as sales and how to pass that information along to their salespeople can also be important because their success is your success. So knowing how to make them the most successful with the product in the stores, having to get the product out of the stores by merchandising it correctly, having it uh, promoted correctly in the stores, that all needs to be done on the front end by you. You have to have a plan for that. And on the back end, you have to trust but verify. So just because they say that, you know, we sold it to 50 stores, it's uh, you know on the shelf, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily on the shelf. If you're working with a larger distributor, it means they delivered it to the dock and then they trusted that the store clerk or the store manager had their, you know, minimum wage employees put the product on the shelf. Doesn't always make it there. Uh, that's where independent merchandising people come into play. There's uh, companies where you can pay, you know, 50 bucks a store and you can have somebody visit the store and take pictures of the product on the shelf, verify that it's done right and that the promotional materials placed around the store, whatever you've negotiated with the store owner or the distributor. So doing that on the back end, having that plan to trust but verify, but also knowing that you know things go wrong because you're moving into more of a manufacturing mode instead of that front end entrepreneur uh, sales mode. You're gonna need to make sure that your flow is there, that your inventory levels stay consistent, that you're able to handle large orders, and then you're able to handle when you have an inventory overload if, in case one of the larger retailers drops. Um, you're also going to need to start doing a little bit more with financing as far as financing and terms and keeping track of all of that and collecting payment. So it moves your role from entrepreneur to a little bit more back end business owner. But at the end of the day, having a distributor allows you to spread a little bit wider, grow your business. And once you're successful on that, then you can add more dollars into that segment and keep maximizing what your return is. And that's when you can have a scalable business. So taking it from local to regional to national is gonna be the goal. It takes a little while. Make sure that you have processes in place that are scalable and that you trust but verify.